Now, I always joke that there's two things that I'll never sell clients, drugs and annuities. Now, I always just say that I don't sell anything. I'm a fee-only firm. But what I'm getting at is uh, I think that annuities are products that are sold and they're not bought. And judged by how big the annuity industry is, it's obviously that somebody is selling these. Last year alone, annuities had over $200 billion in sales. So these are very, very prevalent products. In fact, I never get a new client who doesn't have an annuity stuff somewhere in their portfolio. And as we go through this video, you'll see exactly why they're so prevalent in people's portfolios. The first reason to avoid variable annuities is the cost. They are egregious. Typically, there's three charges with every variable annuity. The first charge is for the underlying investment, which is usually a mutual fund and those run typically about 1.25% per year. Then there's a mortality and expense charge. That typically runs about 1.25% as well. And what that essentially does is it buys insurance that if you were to die, your heirs would get back at least as much as you put into the annuity. So if you put 100,000 into an annuity and you died and it was only worth 80,000, your heirs would still get 100,000. Now the third fee isn't really that much, it's just an administration fee, which is typically about $30 or maybe 0.15% per year. But when you add all this up, you're looking at 2.5% or greater just to have the variable annuity. Now I want to spend just a few seconds isolating the mortality and expense charge and show you why it's really egregious. Let's say you buy an annuity and you put $100,000 into it. Now the first year your mortality expense fees, if it's at 1.25%, is going to be $1,250. Now let's say at the end of the next year your annuity had dropped to $80,000 in value. And let's also say that you had the unfortunate accident and died. Well that $1,250 that you spent on the mortality and expense fee basically is going to ensure that your heirs receive $100,000 rather than just the $80,000 that the annuity is worth. So it seems like a great deal that 1250 basically bought you $20,000 in insurance. But the problem is you pay this M&E fee every year even as the account gets bigger and bigger. So let's say the account starts to grow from 80000 and you don't have that unfortunate accident and die. Well, a few years later, that 80000 the annuity has grown to 300000 Well, you still have that 1.25% mortality and expense fee. So now you're paying $3,750 per year in case the annuity happens to be worth less than $100,000 when you die. Now the probability it's going to drop from $300,000 below $100,000 is really small. So you're essentially paying for insurance that is worthless. Now the insurance company knows this. They make a handsome profit every year on all the mortality and expense fees that they charge their clients. It's just a useless expense after you get past the initial $100,000 investment. In fact, when you add it up over time, you end up spending thousands upon thousands for insurance that you would never, ever even use. One of the benefits that annuity salesmen always talk about when they're selling annuities is its tax advantages. But I'm going to show you that's actually not an advantage at all. Now, it is true that the gains that you have within a variable annuity are not taxed until you pull the money out. But the problem is when you do pull these gains out of the annuity, they're taxed as ordinary income. Whereas if you put the money into a regular taxable account and then you sold the investment and had a gain, you'd only be taxed at the capital gain rate on that gain, which is currently 15% if you hold it for more than a year but many people are in a tax bracket that's substantially higher than 15%. So you could end up paying even higher taxes on the gains within the annuity. The other thing that they talk about when they're selling annuities is how a portion of the distribution that you receive comes back to you tax-free. Well, that's kind of misleading. It's true that if you pull out, let's say, $10,000, maybe 5000 of it's taxable and 5000 isn't. But that portion that isn't taxable is just strictly a return of your initial contribution. So if you put 100000 in initially and you pull out 10000 
and only 5,000 taxable, what that's saying is it's giving you 5,000 of your initial $100,000 back. So why would you pay tax on money that you put in there? It doesn't make sense. But it certainly makes for a nice sales pitch when they're trying to sell the annuity. Another disadvantage of a variable annuity is you don't get a step up at death. What that means is if you owned an asset outright, let's say you put 100000 into it, and when you died it was worth 150000 well for tax purposes your heirs would inherit that asset at $150,000. They'd only pay tax as if the value went up above 150000 Now with a variable annuity, if you put 100000 in and at your death it was worth 50000 your heirs are still going to pay tax on that $50,000 gain. So you can see that it actually creates a tax disincentive if you're going to be leaving this money to your, your kids or your wife or, or anybody else because they don't evade those taxes. So let's look at a real world example to see if annuities really make sense. Let's say well, you're going to invest in the market and we'll assume that the market gets a 10% return. And then we'll assume that you're going to make a $100,000 deposit into an exchange traded fund tracking the market. And let's say you're going to put 100000 into an annuity that tracks the market. And we'll say the ETF pays a tax on the dividends at the 15% rate and the after tax fee equals 0.46%. And we're also going to assume that there's a 2.5% fee on the annuities. Well, you can see after 20 years, your annuity will only grow to about $424,000 after you pay all those high fees. Whereas investing in an exchange traded fund that tracks the market, you'd end up with $618,000, a substantial portion more than the $424,000. So there really is no reason, I think, to buy a variable annuity. So that goes over the variable annuities. But how about fixed annuities? Fixed annuities, again, you give the insurance company a lump sum. And what they're going to do is they're going to pay you out over the rest of your life. But there are some problems with fixed annuities. One, they don't have inflation protection unless you pay extra to buy it. The other thing is it's, it's a last person standing wins. That means if you die early, you're going to end up overpaying for this annuity. And oftentimes there's no benefit provided to the spouse, again, unless you're going to pay for it. So you can buy other protections such as spousal benefit, inflation protection. You can even get guaranteed payments for 10 or 15 years. But you're going to pay a steep cost to get those benefits. So let's look how these extra costs can really add up. What I did is I looked at buying an annuity through Vanguard. Vanguard is a low-cost annuity provider. They don't pay any commission, so they can give you the lowest expenses out there. So let's say you put 200000 into a fixed annuity at age 66. Now, if it was going to be on your life only, you would receive $1,467 per month for the rest of your life. Now, if you wanted to have an inflation adjustment, well, all of a sudden they're going to charge a little bit more, and you'd only get 1072 And if you wanted to have the inflation protection and a 15-year guarantee, well, now you're only going to get $968 per month. And if you wanted to add some spousal coverage to make sure that your spouse got some of this money after you died, well, now you're only looking at getting $828. So it is nice to have that steady income, and I do think fixed annuities are better than variable annuities, but you have to realize they're really not all it's cracked up to be, and I think you can be doing better on your own. So what happens if you're like one of millions of Americans who are stuck with an annuity? I always see people who have had annuities put into their portfolio. Well, you can do a thing called a 1035 exchange. That means you can move it from one annuity provider to another without any taxes. You just have to make sure there's no surrender fees on your current annuity. Insurance companies put surrender fees to make sure that they can recoup the commissions that they paid your planner or broker. But if you do this, you can actually save substantial amounts of money, maybe 1% to 3% per year by going to a Vanguard annuity. The other thing you want to make sure that you never do is have an annuity in your 401k, 403b, or IRA there's absolutely no reason to have a tax-deferred vehicle like an annuity inside another tax-deferred vehicle like an IRA or 401k. I always say that's like wearing scuba gear on a submarine. You just don't need it. But they do it a lot of times because it pays some big commissions. The reason that so many people are sold annuities every year is that they pay big commissions to people. In fact, most of them pay 
at least anywhere from 6 to 8 percent is the norm but you can see some go as high as 10 to even 13 percent. Here's an ad I received from an insurance company talking about selling a variable annuity that paid 13 percent commission. This means that if the broker is able to get you to buy an annuity with a hundred thousand dollars they would get a thirteen thousand dollar payday just to have you fill out the forms. They don't ever need to talk to you again. The other thing is you're gonna have massive amount of fees on this in order for them to make up paying the broker that high of a commission. Here's another ad that I received showing that if you sell the most of this annuity over the next quarter you could win a BMW Roadster. Now if you're sitting with a planner or an advisor and they're trying to win this BMW which annuity do you think you're going to be sold? So I hope this quick little lesson can show you why I'm not a big fan of annuities at all and if you do have some annuities stuck in your portfolio you may want to look at moving it over to a low-cost provider to really help you save on all the fees and expenses.